think there comes a point in everybody's life where they just look at their face one day and go, I need to dye my hair. Today's that day. We're dying of purple. But like, not the whole thing because that's a little ambitious and I also have commitment issues. We're just gonna dye the bottom of my hair. No, I will not simply be dyeing my hair in this video. I like to spice things up and entertain myself because I get very easily bored while I'm doing these things. So I am also going to be sharing some flamingo facts. I have no idea why. I don't know how it started. I don't know how on earth any of this came to be my life, but I know a lot about flamingos. Like, a lot. It's kind of sad. You know, you on a road trip? Here, have some flamingo facts. Your friend having a bad day? Hit him with some flamingo facts. You want to annoy people so that they don't talk to you anymore? Just keep telling them flamingo facts while making dead eye contact and eventually they'll get freaked out and leave you alone. Also for like a makeup challenge I'm doing with my friend, today was pink day and I thought, hmm, pink makeup, it's flamingo time. And yeah, I'm dyeing my hair purple, but you know what? I think that flamingos can have purple energy. Shut up, I'm doing what I want to be happy today. This is what makes me happy today. I'll also be 100% honest and say that I have never dyed my own hair before. I have dyed other people's hair. I was going to get my hair cut before everything and I wasn't able to. So I'm easily gonna need to get at least a couple inches chopped off my hair. And I figured, hey, I could just dye the ends purple. If I don't like it, I'll just chop it off. So I'd like to formally apologize in advance to my hairdresser, Sherry, if you're watching this, I am so sorry. Think of it as job security for when the world goes back to normal. We didn't really have any disposable gloves at home, so, you know, your girl here had to improvise a bit. If you were thinking that this is gonna be a classy hair dyeing video, I'm very sorry, you're gonna be very disappointed because it's gonna be a train wreck. I'm being entirely honest. Flamingos are amazing because not only do they look really cool, but they're also like objectively terrifying if you look at them up close. Looking at them from far away is like really cool. Like, oh, they're so pink, but then you get closer and they kind of look like the devil low key. Well, maybe that's just me. Flamingos are actually not really pink. They're only pink because of what they eat, like the crustaceans and stuff. They have beta keratins in them. That's what turns them pink. But also not all flamingos look the same because there are six different species of flamingos that exist pretty much all over the world except for Antarctica and apparently Australia, which honestly is a sad existence. And it is totally possible to be able to distinguish every type of flamingo just by looking at them, which I can do. I know so much about flamingos that I can probably tell you what kind of flamingo you're looking at just by seeing a picture of it. <laughs> oh, I'm kind of intimidated. Ooh, how far down do I go? Oh my god. Oh, I got some on my... This is supposed to be my safe hand and I've already spoiled it. Okay. Well, there's no going back now. Yeah, I know you're supposed to use a brush, but like, you girl here ain't got one. <laughs> Help. All my hairdresser friends are probably screaming into the void right now, and I'd apologize, but I'm not sorry. <laughs> so first up, we have the American or Caribbean flamingos. They are the brightest of all the flamingos, but they are found actually, even though it's called the American flamingos, you won't find any in the USA because uh, sometimes they go to Florida, but they probably just came over from Cuba, and they are bright pink. And then there's, I'm not even kidding, there are three different kinds of flamingos that live in South America and they all live like pretty much right next to each other. We have James's flamingo, there's the Andes flamingo, and the Chilean flamingo. And the Andes and James flamingo have little black tip wings, they look like super freaking dapper. The Chilean flamingos have bright pink booties, they're super cute. The rest of their feathers are like super light pink, but their booties, ooh, they are a bright pink and they're super cute. Uh, they also have pink and black beaks. Also, their beaks look a little different. That's how you can tell um, if you're bougie and know a lot about flamingos like me. You can also tell which ones are Andean flamingos because Andean flamingos are the only flamingos that have yellow legs. 
out of all of them. They're just super classy like that. And then you have James's flamingos, which who the hell is James and why does he get his own version of flamingos? That honestly just seems like favoritism to me. They're like bougier versions of the Andean flamingos. So they have like black tip wings and they also have like splotches of darker pinks all around them. So they're like a little more dressed up for the occasion. You know, somebody didn't give Andy Flamingos the memo that they should dress up a little bit more. system is not working i am getting stained well it should be fine so because they get their color from the beta keratins that they eat that flamingos in the zoo if they were not fed like specific food dyes that make them pink they would be white in the zoos so you're welcome i mean granted the stuff that they feed them is like good and it has better nutritional value and it doesn't hurt them to give them things that make them pink, but just so you know that the pinks you see in zoos are lies. They are manufactured lies. So they actually don't start turning pink until they're like two or three. They are born white. When flamingos have babies, like both the males and the females will feed the baby, and they do that by your typical bird fashion, by vomiting stuff back up in their mouth. But they store it in their crop or their throat, and they just like spit that crop milk just into the baby. But when they do that, the adult flamingos actually lose some of their coloring because all of the, oh God, I don't know if I'm saying it right, the beta keratins are going to the baby and not to them, so they start turning like really pale or almost white, and it's all for the love of the baby. Also, they make like pretty bomb parents, like both of them will take care of the baby and sit on the egg because, you know. They understand you both gotta step the heck up when you have kids, you know? I think some people could learn from that. I think that the world's worst sectioning award goes to me! And I really actually kind of low-key hope it turns out terribly. Also, something I did not know until recently is that flamingos can fly, and I don't know why that makes me deeply uncomfortable. I feel like flamingos are not the kind of birds that should be able to fly because of how long their legs are in comparison to the rest of their body. But when they fly, instead of like tucking up into their bodies like a lot of other birds do, they just kind of like hang out behind them, which this is deeply uncomfortable. Like nothing with legs that long should be able to fly. I don't like it. There's a reason that ostriches and emus can't fly. They can't fly, right? I would literally rather die than see a flying ostrich. <laughs> Apparently they fly in like V formations, kind of similar to how geese fly, and apparently they also make honking noises, which in my one experience where I actually saw a flamingo in real life, I just remember looking into their eyes and like seeing a portal to the netherworld because their eyes are disproportionately small compared to the rest of their face, especially with how massive their beaks are. Just look at their eyes and it's like they're peering into your soul and their pupils are so uncomfortably tiny. Like flamingos are way cuter when you look at them from far away. Fun fact, flamingos are actually demons. Oof. Yeah, I hope that somebody comments down below a better way that I could have done this and dyed the ends of my hair with the limited resources I have. Uh, please let me know down below so I can ignore your comment. <laughs> I live in my chaos. I'm happy in my chaos. I started with really good intentions of being patient with this and that did not play out. I'm very proud of all of my terrible choices. What have I done, sweet Jesus? What have I done? Oh no. Oh no, no, no. So now I have to let this sit for like 20 minutes, which might actually be the death of me. So in terms of how power structures work with flamingos, you know, the pinker a flamingo, the more powerful. I guess the flamingo or the the better they're seen in their social hierarchy which honestly i think that is how we should start deciding <laughs> who has power in society whoever wears the brightest pink is the most powerful person just end a discussion that's how it works now which might actually be me if my hands are turning pink from this time because i only made one glove for one hand because i'm smart so flamingos have been 
observed by scientists to bully each other. They just risk injury by shoving each other around and there's really no other reason for it other than maybe to just enforce the social hierarchy. They aren't entirely sure why, but uh, maybe flamingos are just jerks and they like shoving each other around. Flamingos are bullies. End of discussion. Also, speaking of scientists and flamingos, scientists discovered that um, you can balance a dead flamingo on one leg. They were trying to figure out why flamingos are always balancing on one leg as opposed to two, and I think that they actually discovered that they are more structurally stable on one leg than they are on two legs, and that a dead flamingo can indeed balance on one leg, but it would be very difficult for a dead flamingo to balance on two legs, which is information we have, thank god for science. They also theorize that flamingos stand on one leg and hold it closer to their body because it helps conserve body heat and keeps them from getting too chilly and too cold. So they keep one leg like tucked on up to stay nice and toasty and then they balance on one other leg. And I can't believe I didn't think of this sooner, but I was really just distracted by trying to dye my hair at the same time. It's hard to share flamingo facts and dye your hair at the same time. I was talking about flamingo eyes being the most terrifying thing on God's green earth, because they are. Uh, apparently their brains are even smaller than their eyes which is really just stressful. Their legs are really cool, not only because their legs are literally longer than the rest of their body, but because what looks like a knee joint is actually an ankle joint. They have knees. They're just way far up close to the body and you really can't see them most of the time. The ones that we see are actually big old ankle joints because they're kind of derpy looking animals to begin with, but they have to like stick their heads down in the water and they eat with their heads upside down and like backwards. Their tongues act like suction so they can just suction in the water and they act like pistons to just spit the water back out. Apparently in some species of flamingos, they can do that like up to like 20 times a second, which is just excessive power that no creature should be able to wield. Flamingos are actually considered not endangered and are most of them are of least concern. There is actually one very endangered kind of flamingo, and that is the plastic lawn flamingo. Fun stuff about the plastic yard flamingos, they were made in like 1957, I think they were sold in 1958, and plastic lawn flamingos are the official bird of Madison, Wisconsin, specifically the fake plastic flamingos. Information that just makes me love my state even more than I already did. I, it's been like 20 minutes, I'm gonna go jump in and see what happens. You know, I kind of like how it turned out because my hair is so dark that it's not super noticeable. But there's definitely a bit of purple in there. Definitely isn't the best look with my bright pink eyeshadow, but whatever, it's flamingo day. We're not here to be cohesive, we're here to be chaotic and that's what it's all about. So thanks for going on this emotional journey with me and now you are officially part of the group of people that I have forced to sit through flamingo facts.